These designer fragrances are absolutely amazing. And I'll tell you what, some of these are really giving some niche a run for their money. We're at a weird time where niche is expensive and designer is expensive too, but it doesn't always have to be. There's still a lot of great fragrances out there for not a ton of money. You don't have to spend necessarily over a hundred dollars to get a really good product. Sometimes you might feel that way because everything is so expensive. But when you look at what's in this video, there's only a couple of these that are over a hundred, but most everything here is flying below that price point. And when you take a look at niche, you know, you're well above 200 plus, two, three, four hundred dollars. So we've got some options here for you that smell great, perform great, are unique, are versatile as well, and have a uniqueness about them. Not necessarily exactly like niche, that's not really what I'm looking for either because then you sacrifice some of that versatility and some of that mass appeal, but these really are a bit exciting and they might be what you're looking for if you're tired of the same old thing. And so I'll link all these down below. So if you wanna pick them up, you can do so and get them at the prices that I referenced throughout the video. Very rarely do I talk about retail price when I say this cost $40 or 30 or you know 50 or whatever, usually it's through discounters. So I'll link them up down below. This first one is Rokus Man Intense. So I believe we're looking at around $40 and then testers with cap come in at a bit less. Don't remember for sure, but here recently they had some testers with cap for a pretty good price below what the full presentation is going for. So you can save some money there on that end. You're still looking at well under 50. Like I said, I think 40, 45 is the going rate for full presentation, tester with cap, down into the 30s. It's a really good price for this. Now the original is also great and it's also very affordable and I think that might even be into the $25 range or something. The original Rokus Man, it's been around for a long time and it's really affordable as well. Personally, if the Intense is available to you, which it is most places now, to me, this is the one to get. Spend the extra, you know, whatever, $10, $15, and go for this one because to me, you get more than $10 or $15 worth of value out of this one compared to the original. And it's not to say that the original is bad because it's not. I just think that this one is better. It truly is an Intense flanker. So they're Maintaining that original smell, the cappuccino, the fur, the woods, just that coffee, sweet, kind of masculine smell. You keep that, but they just make it stronger, better performing, longer lasting, a bit heavier and richer. It just smells great. And so obviously, no surprise, this is for people who like coffee and fragrances or maybe just in general. I'm a big fan of that note. I love it. And so this is something that I really enjoy. And there aren't necessarily a ton of coffee scents out there that are affordable. A lot of times when you're looking at dedicated coffee scents, you're going over into the niche uh, category, which is where it gets considerably more expensive. So for $40 or a bit less, you can get Rokus Man Intense. It's a great coffee scent. Next up, we have CH Men Passion. We've got Iris, Sandalwood, Vanilla. This is a fantastic release and you know, as far as the CH Men line goes, they <laughs> have kind of fallen off a little bit. They've released a few that are kind of limited edition and not really mainstream. They just don't take off in the same way. You know, they discontinued Privé, which is one of their best works ever, in my opinion. Such a good scent, CH Men Privé. You know, don't know what they were thinking there, but it is what it is. And I just kind of got to the point where when a new one of these would be announced, I wouldn't be all that excited for it. This one came along and it did look promising just off the notes itself. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm kind of anticipating this one a little bit. I got it in. Retail on this one is so reasonable, like a hundred bucks, 98, I believe is what it is, which as far as new designers go, is cheap. So many new designers are going for 150, 160, 190, you know, and so on. The elixirs and parfums and so on. So the fact that this one was coming in at just a hair under 100 immediately, that was cool. On discounters now, it's down into the 80s and upper 70s and things like that. I'm sure it'll probably drop a little bit more, but I loved it right off the first sniff. You can go back and watch that first impressions video. It's a really good, nice iris scent with a little bit of a unique twist. It's not exactly like Dior Homme Intense, Valentino Womo Intense, or anything like that. They've got their own unique style going on here. Really nice powdery nature about this one. I think it's really good. Has a lot to offer. 
especially at this price point, which I know I keep focusing on, but this one, again, is worth every penny in my opinion. And it really can hold its own against some of the other more expensive iris scents out there, especially if you're focusing on mass appeal in this instance. Next up, we have Ferragamo Oud. So typically your Oud releases will be a bit more expensive than their standard ones. And that's kind of the situation here. I believe, I don't know, 58, maybe $60 for this one. It's got tobacco, rum, leather, and of course, a little bit of Oud in here. It's still a designer oud, meaning that it's very wearable and still mass pleasing and just easy to pull off. Nothing too intimidating about this, but it does have a booziness to it and a smokiness from that tobacco, the rum, a masculine leathery undertone. So it does have quite a bit of substance and depth to it. You know, this is definitely not a freshie and we haven't really had any freshies yet in this video. We will cover that up next, but Ferragamo oud, it's a fantastic oud scent and I use Oud lightly because again, it's, it's very designer level and it's not as prominent as you might expect it to be considering what it's named after. So it's still a great cooler weather tobacco scent that just works really well. And in the grand scheme of things compared to a lot of other Oud, tobacco, leather, rum scents out there, this is pretty affordable. So if you want something that you can pick up right now and wear for spring and summer, you could go for something like John Varvatos Artisan Pure. Now this guy's been hyped up quite a bit. And it's been out for a while. I don't know, what was it? 2016, maybe 2017, somewhere around in there. And it took off pretty quickly and was kind of at the forefront for a while in, in terms of summer releases. This one took a while to hit discounters though. I remember it vividly. It, it really uh, was hanging around 60-ish dollars, 70. So I guess, what I meant to say was it hit discounters, but then it was hovering at about double what it's going for now for a pretty long time period. Now it's down into the 30s, okay? And it's it really, it couldn't be cheaper at this point, which I love to see because it's just that much more obtainable to many more people, which I think is great because I encourage everybody to try to get their nose on this one at some point. And at this price point, it, it makes it easier to blind buy because, you know, if you buy a sample of it online, not like you're saving a ton of money at this point. We've got orange, clementine, and petty grain in here. Some other aromatics. You've got some lemon and things like that, but it's it's green, earthy, uh, you know, fruity, and the petty grain. It just is really, really textured, and it, it just gives it this unique feel and this unique style that you don't really get from a ton of summer scents. So this one stands out on its own. And it smells like it could be going for so much more money. You know, this one will get compared to things like Zerzhov, Kobe, I think I've seen people compare it to Neo. It doesn't really have the bergamot, but nonetheless, the petty grain being very prominent, I can kind of see where that's coming from a little bit. But it's getting compared to, you know, some premium, well-respected niche fragrances, right? And again, this is in the mid 30s to low 40s, if even that. So it's a great, great bang for your buck scent that doesn't smell cheap at all, given the price point. It actually smells very premium and it's worth every bit of the cost that this one's going for. Next up, we have Isimiyaki Nui Desi Parfum. So we've got patchouli, leather, vanilla, and I believe some pink pepper too. I love this stuff and it finally has popped back up. I don't know how long it's gonna be around. I'm guessing not all that long, just given the circumstances of it. A lot of these Isimiyaki's end up getting discontinued at one point or another and get harder to find. That was the case for this one for a while, but here lately it's been in stock on a somewhat consistent basis. So if you have any interest in this, scoop it up now while you can. I'll link it down below again, but it's one of the better releases from the line, from the brand, when you're talking their darker, cooler weather scents. You know, there's Polaris, there's Noir Ombre, there's uh, Or Incense. There's Pulse of the Night, if everybody remembers that. They've got a lot of really good ones, a lot of which at this point are hard to find. Like all those I mentioned, you really can't get them that easily. But this one, it can hold a light or hold a candle or hold a match or whatever term you wanna use. It can hang with those. Like it really is a fantastic scent. Usually coming in at about 60 to $70 for this 125 ml, it smells fantastic for the price. This next one here is by far the most expensive scent in this video, and it's still designer. So, you know, maybe this one's cheating. I don't know, okay? Again, it's expensive. 
recently though, it did pop up for 125 bucks. Typical going rate is 170 to 180, sometimes 190, okay? But if you're on my mailing list and texting list, you get notified when out of nowhere, things like this pop up for 125 bucks, which isn't all that common. Dior own Parfum. So yes, guys, it is expensive. It's a niche price, but again, a lot of other new designer fragrances are niche price too. Everything just keeps going up, but it's still a designer scent with niche characteristics and niche quality, niche performance too. I mean, it, it really could pass for a niche fragrance. I'm 100% confident that if Amouage or you know something like Parfums de Marly or any big niche brand were to you know take this and bottle it and sell it, they could fetch 350 at retail all day and it would sell like crazy discounters, you know, 250 or something. I think this one would still go crazy. It is such a good scent. Iris, oud, rose, leather smells absolutely incredible. This is definitely going to be a bit more daring. In fact, probably the most daring or challenging scent in this video. But if you know what you're after and you know what you like, this is it right here. As far as other iris scents go, there is no comparison. This is next level. And again, I'm telling you that because you want to be aware of it before you decide whether or not you want to blind buy it or not. Because there are definitely going to be some people who will hate how this smells. But there's also going to be a lot of people like myself who smell this and think it's just absolutely insane and haven't smelled anything like it before. So yeah, I think this could pass as a niche scent. If someone was asking what you were wearing, you could tell them, yeah, it's a $200 niche fragrance and they would probably, you know, expect that to be the case. It's just really good. This next one is, you know, 30 bucks, 25, $30. Also could pass as a niche fragrance as well, at least pretty close to it, probably controversial but it's Bentley for Men Intense. I think it retails for 80, but like I said, discounters, you're looking at 30, okay? So really, really affordable. It's in the cheapy category, but it does not smell like it. It's got leather, rum, and incense, a lot of it. It's very smoky, old school, woody, masculine. It's another daring one, okay? These past couple here we've covered are a little bit more tricky. You know, you, you just don't wanna necessarily completely rush into them having not given it any thought because I see it happen all the time with Bentley for Men Intense because of the price point. People see, oh, it's 30 bucks. I can buy that right now and not worry about it. And I'm just gonna love it, right? Because other people said they like it. It's just not the case, okay? And then people get upset at the people who are talking about this and liking it because, well, common sense would tell you that this might not be something that everybody's going to like, especially if you're coming from really liking and consistently wearing freshies and aquatics or blue fragrances or you know newer style sweet Invictus fragrances, right? It's kind of a, a steep learning curve to this one for lack of a better term, so be careful with it. But again, at this price point, it is so good if you want something that is more mature and stands out, has great performance, great quality for essentially dirt cheap. Last up for this video, we have Rokas Mustache Eau de Parfum. So we have two from this brand, which I thought was kind of a compliment because, uh, you know, compared to, let's say, Versace and you know, Calvin Klein, and I'm just trying to think of some other designer brands that are in this price range on discounters usually. Versace is definitely one. Some Dolce & Gabbana scents, and you guys get the idea. Compared to some of those, you know, they don't always make videos like this, but Rokas has a couple that I think were good enough to make it in here, and honestly, Rokas Loam would also be a pretty solid choice. So if you've been sleeping on the brand, you should maybe try some of them because they're really good. Now this one smells a little bit like YSL Tuxedo with their own twist. It's actually a little bit more vanilla forward and pink pepper forward. It doesn't have as much patchouli and, and things like that, like the original Tuxedo, but definitely heavily inspired by it. You can't really you know, argue that. But the good news about it is it's an affordable one. The prices on this one vary pretty extensively. Sometimes it's you know, $40, $45. Sometimes it's up into the 50s. It's just kind of all over the board. That's just kind of how it is. But yeah, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. It's a fantastic scent that smells a lot more expensive than what it is. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. Some fantastic designer fragrances that kind of make a niche look bad a little bit here. I mean, for the price, you get some amazing products and you don't have to spend into the 100s to do it. Except for like one of these, you know, Dior own Parfum, there's nothing cheap about that. It is 
pretty ridiculously expensive, but you do get your money's worth out of it. Everything else though is really affordable. And also Dior own Parfum, there's a good clone. It's called uh, FOMO Gary's Den. It's 37 to 40 bucks and it's a dead ringer pretty much. So check that one out if you are kind of apprehensive about spending that much money on the Dior, which again, kind of blind buy, unsafe, so that might be something to consider. All right, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another video. Take care.